The first beta build of Android 13 is now live, marking an important milestone in the development of the new version. With Beta 1, Google's opening up Android 13 to wider testing ahead of the platform stability phase in June, and the final launch likely coming up sometime in August or September. So let's take a look at what's new in this latest beta build, and whether it's stable enough to run on your main device. Take a sec to subscribe to Android Central for more Android 13 coverage, and we'll dive right in. So the biggest functional change in this new beta is around how media permissions work. Basically, in earlier versions, giving an app access to your media would include photos and audio files and everything in between. In Android 13 Beta 1, apps can request more granular access to your media, meaning that a podcast app, for instance, doesn't get access to all your photos just to be able to read audio files. It's a great way to nail down apps' permissions even more than Android currently already does, making sure they only have access to what they actually need. In terms of other under-the-hood changes, there are new audio routing APIs to help developers of media apps like music streaming apps better understand where that audio is actually going to be played. For example, on the phone, maybe over Bluetooth, or to a Google Cast device. And that should help them stream that audio in a way that makes sense for the device. Next, we're seeing a few minor visual changes in this new beta. The most unusual of these is the new squiggly tracking bar when you're in the new Android 13 media card. It's certainly a bold design choice, complementing the changes that were made in the previous build. Who knows if it'll stick around in future Android 13 builds, but it certainly has a lot of character. We've been seeing signs that more wallpaper-based Material U color palettes will be coming to Android 13, and now they're live in Beta 1. Most wallpapers will give you the option of 12 palettes to scroll through, and many of the new ones will contrast more with the wallpaper than the palettes from Android 12. Meanwhile, if you choose basic colors, then you're able to pick a two-tone pastel palette from a variety of hues, as opposed to just the single color option that was present in Android 12. There are some minor changes to the lock screen too. On the Pixel 6 here, we're seeing a slightly smaller two-line clock. That's the large clock that occupies the entire screen when you don't have any notifications. And the shortcut to device controls, the panel for controlling smart home gear in the bottom left corner, could become more useful in Android 13. The latest beta gives you the option to allow these to be used without first unlocking your phone. Though whichever app you use behind these controls, for example Google Home, will first need to be updated to support this Android 13 feature. The clipboard overlay that's been hinted about in previous Android 13 builds is now live in Beta 1. Copy anything from any app, and you'll get this little overlay popping up at the bottom of the screen, similar to the screenshot pop-up. From there, you can edit your text before pasting it into another app. Really useful if you want to trim it down or add more context. Bizarrely, one feature we're not seeing in Beta 1 here, which was live in the previous developer preview 2, is the per-app language setting. That's disappeared altogether from the app info menu where it was shown before alongside permissions and other options. Google notes that there are several bugs with this feature in Android 13 Beta 1, however, so perhaps it's for the best that it's hidden for now. Speaking of hidden stuff, there are a couple of hidden settings pages in this beta that have been dug up by Esper's Michel Rachman as part of his extensive documentation of the changes in Android 13. The first is a resolution control panel. Lots of Android phones have this, for example letting you run a Quad HD screen at a slightly lower Full HD resolution to save power. Pixels have lacked this feature so far, but it seems that might be changing in a future build of Android 13. And there are yet more signs that Face Unlock could potentially be on the cards if not for the Pixel 6 series then possibly the Pixel 7 later this year. Remnants of this feature in the Pixel Code have been around since the Pixel 6 landed though, so we'll just have to wait and see. Finally, it seems on-device search will be getting an overhaul in Android 13. It's disabled in the current build, but Michel Rachman dug up an early version of the new One Search interface that seems like it's on its way to pixels in Android 13. With a little command line work, you can enable it in Beta 1, though it mostly works the same as the earlier Pixel implementation, only with a fresh coat of paint. It's going to be interesting to see how Google builds this out in upcoming Android 13 betas. So Beta 1 of Android 13 is available on phones from the Pixel 4 onwards through the Android Beta program, and you can also now try it on non-Pixel phones, with a few caveats, by using an Android 13 generic system image on any phone that supports Google's Project Treble. That's most phones running Android 9 and up. It's still early days here for Android 13, but as someone who's used the comparatively far buggier Android 12 beta last year, the first Android 13 beta seems pretty tame in terms of bugs. It's been pretty stable for me so far, and the known issues list includes just a few minor problems, none of which really seem to be showstoppers. At the same time, unlike the jump from Android 11 to Android 12, there's not that much new stuff to try out, and obviously the visuals of Android 13 are mostly the same as the current Android 12. 
So I'd say if you're an enthusiast who knows what they're getting into, again, take a look at that known issues list, you're probably gonna be fine running this beta day to day. If you want a bit more peace of mind in terms of how reliable your phone is gonna be though, maybe wait until the next beta or possibly the first platform stability release coming up in June. That's it for now. Let us know what you think of Android 13 so far and if you're looking forward to trying it on devices later this year. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.